G'day guys, welcome back. This is part five of the build series for the Dual Cab 200. So, righto guys, before I get started with this video, I just want to tell you about this giveaway right here. So I'm going to drop a couple of images there. If you watch till the end of this video, you got the chance to win a 100 amp hour lithium battery from Enerdrive and a 40 amp DC to DC charger, just like the one in this truck. So watch till the end of the vid and you'll find out how to enter. The last episode you would have seen it, it was at ARB and Burley Heads and Norweld, where it got all the bar work and ARB stuff fitted and also the canopy on the back. After that, it goes back to Pro Touring Concepts, who's Caleb, he's at Burley Heads as well. And this is, in this video, we're gonna show you all the 12 volt upgrades we've done to the car as a, in the Land Cruiser and also the lithium power system we've put in the canopy to suit our touring needs, all right? So let's kick it off. Let's open the bonnet and show you what happens under here. So we don't do a lot with um, the, the upgrades under here, but the first thing we do is change out the start battery. So Caleb, with his knowledge of building these things over the last few years, he knows that the standard start batteries aren't really up to full-time touring. So we straight away, we swap that out with a Century dual force battery. Gives you a little bit more reserve capacity to run a few lights and stuff, and they just seem to be a more reliable battery for when you're full-time touring, as we don't have a second starting battery under the bonnet because we've got a big lithium one in the back, right? So come over here, babe. My, my wife's filming, so that's why I'm calling her babe. In here, Caleb does all the wiring. So everything is fused, conduited, heat shrinked, zip tied nice and neat in here, and it all runs throughout the engine bay. So keep it pretty simple. There's like a canopy power fuse that just runs power back to the DC to DC in there. Keep that circuit protected. We've got our tow pro and we've got a few other fuses there for accessories. On this side, um, what we do run is a Red Art Smart Start solenoid. So if you can grab this, I'll take the camera, I'll poke it down in here. There's also a roof lights fuse in there as well. But that Smart Start solenoid, what that does, it just keeps your starting battery fully charged. It charges your start battery first, that isolator will click over, then it will send charge backwards to either the lithium battery in the canopy or to the caravan charging circuit. So that's what that does. Anyway, that's it under there. Pretty simple, apart from you've got the wiring looms for the ARB intensities that um, ARB run when it was in there getting everything fitted. So the other thing we've got on the front, which also Caleb does while it's in the shop, is the UHF. So I'll show you on the inside, we've got the Oricom DTX 4000 fitted in there. And this is the town and country aerial on the front. So what this does, you can have the little fiberglass whip on it, which gives you a six and a half dB rating, or you can unscrew it and put a cap on it and it drops it down to a three dB, but it depends what you're doing. If you're around town or you wanna fit it in your driveway, or you're in the bush or you're out in the open road, but I like these ones because they're not a big chunky whip and they're sort of not, they don't affect your driving site, you know what I mean? We've had a couple of aerials on our last car, one for a Cellfi mobile booster and a big chunky one for the aerial um, for the UHF. I just found it sort of obstructed your vision a bit. I like this one a lot more. Anyway, let's move inside, eh? Because the next thing is the upgrades on the inside. So again, we keep it pretty simple. I'll take this in here. All Caleb does at Pro Touring is switch out the standard fuse panel or the standard um, switch panel here and put one in that has a few more. So now we've got our camp lights, our LED light bar on the roof and our spotlights. And then up here is our Tow Pro Elite. Everything else stays the same and just gives us a few more switches and it keeps it looking factory. All right, now I'll show you these camp lights in a minute and how they work. Um, also in here, we have run. Look at this, this is bloody brilliant. I love this thing. This is our roof console from Department of Interior. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons I didn't want to get um, a VX or a Sahara, apart from the extra money, of course, but if you've got a, uh, a roof or a sunroof, you can't run a roof console. And I just, I've always wanted one of these. They just provide so much storage and they get the radio up out of the way. And also I'll show you in a second, I've created this little iPad holder for the kids. So um, they're not looking down at their screens all the time. They can just watch one iPad in the middle and it bolts to this console. So come in here, here we are. Oricom DTX 4000, we turn it on with the one button and then we've got a, our channel switching and our modes on the handpiece. I really like it, mate. Um, it's all we've ever used for the last couple of years. We had a DTX um, 4200, which was the remote mounted one in the last car, but because we've got the roof console, it fits nice and neat in there. 
tucked out of the way. Also, come back in, we've got power sockets either side, so there's twin USBs, one on this side, there's also one on the other side. You retain the factory GXL light and drop down Sonny's holder here. That just gets moved from here back to here in the console. And then you've got a little storage compartment up here where I've been storing GoPro batteries and Sunnies and that sort of thing. Uh, a light switch for your big LED light. And then here is my little iPad holder. So I've created that out of a few Railblazer accessories and an iPad holder. And you can swing it around, move it around. Also, you can take it straight out and I can put a GoPro in there as well. It's bloody great gear. I use all the same stuff in my tinny for rod holders and that sort of thing. Um, there you go. I think that's pretty much all we've done on the inside, right? You've seen in the past videos, we've got the stock lock converter lock up that Cookie did, so the switches are there for that. Um, standard head unit is probably one thing that lets you down in a GXL. It's really not that flash, considering the amount of money you pay for a cruiser. Um, but that's it, mate. Everything else in here is pretty much stock as a rock. Um, one thing I get a lot of questions about is my phone holder. This is just a quad lock car suction mount. Um, you power it up with a cigarette socket and when you stick your phone on there, it charges wirelessly through there. So that has been handy. I like that one. All right, let's go. Hold this, babe. Next up, camp lighting. So I showed you the switch inside. Um, Caleb wires all these up. When we originally got it done, I should talk about this too, uh, we had a Rhino platform on top, okay? Now that has um, since been changed out because ARB were in development of this new base rack. So they've brought out their own roof rack system, which I think is, mate, it's killer. It absolutely works a treat. It's tougher, it's lighter, um, it's cheaper, and the accessory mounting system is heaps better. So we've since had that swapped out. Now on the front of that, we used to run two intensities. Um, that you would have seen in the build series vids. So now they have their own 37 inch light bar that runs just on the front of the base rack. Camp lighting. What we've got is we've got one of these on either side. So little Narva light, one there, one on the other side in the same spot. And if you swing down the back, there's another one here. So if we're pulling into camp late of a night, I can hit me camp light switch. All those come on, gives me good lighting. And um, I put them on last night, so I'll, sh I'll show you a bit of overlay footage now of what they look like gives us heaps of light around a campsite. So it's good security, good for setup, pack up, that sort of thing. Back and down the boat ramp early in the morning, flick them on, it's really good, mate. Especially when you're trying to push <laughs> our little trailer with the tinny on it, you can't see it. Um, there we go, righto, that is the car, all right? That is all upgrades to the factory or to the cruiser itself. Now let's move on to the canopy. All right, come down here and I'll start on this side of the canopy. I'll tell you where we are, but check this out. If you're wondering, we're halfway up Cape York in a place called Harn Crossing. And it's brilliant, mate. We stayed here last night. So put that on your list if you're heading up the Cape. Here's the other light on this side. Um, and oh, while we're here, actually, I should show you, I've got a solar panel on top. So what Caleb's done is he's wired a, um, a flexible panel up on top. It's a 135 watt rad power panel. And um, yeah, I know it's not gonna work too well with the tinnies on, but it's not there for that reason. It's for when we are pulled up Tinny off fishing, car's not moving anywhere for a week. That solar panel is enough to pump in six, seven amps an hour to charge up the lithium in here to keep the fridge running. And it works really well. So there you go, it's just connected by a uh, Anderson plug here, and that runs down into our DC to DC, which charges the battery. On top also, I should talk about the roof rack and the boat loader, that all gets fitted when it comes back by Caleb at Pro Touring. So we spend the time to set it up where it needs to be so the awning opens, you set all your ropes up and your bridle up for your tinny at the right length. So it just pulls it on automatically and you set your stops up up here. So it pulls it in here, pulls it into the wedge, sort of stops it against the, the, the blocks there and then you just screw it down. What I've done is I've put an extra few eye bolts in there and used some big turnbuckles and I'll crank them down to put it on the roof and the winch also stays attached so it's not gonna go anywhere. We've done 300 k's of corrugation yesterday and that is rock solid. It's not a drama. Um, righto, battery system in the canopy. This is what I really wanna show you. So if you've watched our vids for a while and you've seen in the Mazda, swing around here, babe. Um, we had an Enerdrive system in the BT50. Now, this is pretty much identical, okay? 
actually, well, it is identical apart from the monitoring system. We use a Symarine system in this one, which is a new LCD display of showing you what's going in and out of your battery and your circuits. And the old one, we just had an ePro battery monitor. But it's the same. We have a 200 amp lithium BTEC battery from Enerdrive. We have a 40 plus Enerdrive DC to DC charger, which is also the MPPT solar controller for the solar panel on the base rack. And we have a 40 amp AC charger. So when we are parked up and we need some extra boost, we can plug a 240 volt lead into that. And all the rest of the smarts and wiring, breakers and protection is all done by Caleb at Pro Touring Concepts. So one big difference with this setup is we are running an upright fridge instead of a drop down. So this is a Dometic CRX 110. I'll open her up. Inside you've got a little freezer compartment at the top and plenty of shelves there for beers and then a veggie drawers at the bottom. Uh, ours is pretty empty at the moment, but I find they work best if you keep them fully stocked. Now one of the good things about these fridges is a weight saving. So you save a lot of weight by not running a fridge slide. So if you are chasing those few kilos, that's a good option to look at. Um, in here, I'll grab this camera and slide it in. This is part of the power pack. Like in here we have lights, obviously. So there's a switch for our lights. I'll show you here. They go on and off and they're also color changing. So if you hit the dimmer up in here, they go from orange to white and you can dim them up and down as you please. So they work really well out here in the camp. So this is the Symarine monitoring system. This is what tells us what's going on with our battery all the time. And if we scroll through uh, the menus, it tells you there what your fridge is pulling, how much solar is going in or how much current from your alternator is going in and how many amps you're using from your lights and then total battery health and all that sort of thing. So it's really handy. You can also hook up extra sensors from your water tanks and that sort of stuff underneath. Now, a couple more things. Uh, on this side, there is 12 volt USB sockets and a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. Inside, everything's fused. So here's an input breaker and a solar breaker. Uh, you can't see tucked up away in there, but that's where our fridge hooks up. And there's also the battery health or the um, battery monitor where all the sensors plug into and then feed into the Symarine panel. Now that there is our ePro 2000 watt inverter. This is how we turn it on. Now I've got a 2000 watt inverter because we like to run a lot of appliances out of here and we like to cook out of here and not carry gas. So this is my kitchen drawer. If I open this, there you go. There's our induction cooktop. It's a 2000 watt Inobella. It was only 59 bucks. We've had it for two years and it cranks. Just make sure you buy the right saucepans from Woolies to work on induction. And then all I have to do is plug it in, swing around here. I've got an extension lead running from the inverter to a little double pole socket there. I'll plug it in, turn it on, and we cook in here out of the wind. There's no gas needed. And it keeps, we cook a lot of fish out here, like we do beer battered fish and stuff. And if you go up the beach for a day, you can cook bacon and eggs, you can cook steaks, you can do whatever. You don't have to carry gas and the wind's not gonna bother you. So I really like that. This is my kitchen drawer set up. This one also slides right out of this, so you've got a nice prep area there as well. Now, while we're on this side, I'll show you, this is how we travel full time in it. So this is loaded up to do a Cape trip. So all this is supplies. So beer, snacks, food, soft drinks, mixes, water, all that sort of thing. Our kitchen drawer stays as a kitchen drawer. I never fill it up with stuff. Up here is our fire pit cooking gear and um, some duffel bags. So when we do leave the van, all our clothes and stuff go in those and get chucked under the boat. So then we leave the van somewhere and we can take off with all our gear. First aid kits, um, ARB storage containers with cooking gear and from freeze dried food, tackle um, and wading bag, all for the fishing gear. And then you'll see on the motor on the other side. All right, let's swing around the other side. That is our fridge and kitchen side with the inverter and the Symarine panel. Uh, you can't see the battery. The battery is tucked away behind the fridge. I'll have to show you some overlay footage of that from when Caleb put it in. Now, Caleb does all these systems on his own. So he builds the boards, he templates them out, he does all the wiring and he gets it all schmicko. And he knows exactly what you need for full-time touring. So it works a treat. Now this side, this is our storage side our charging side, uh, our camera gear side, our toilet side. Um, so in here, we've got a heap of containers and a big single drawer that houses all our stuff. I'll just quickly show you that before I talk about the battery. Look at that, just got some storage tubs in there. And we keep all our bits and bobs in there, um, camera gear and whatnot, and it all stays secure and dry, dust free, and you can lock that one as well if you want. Now let's talk about the battery stuff. In here, come on this side, we have got Another light switch up here and a uh, switch for our compressor. Sorry, there we go, that's our compressor there. We run 
the ARB twin air compressor and it cranks, mate. So if we just hit this button here, there you go, she'll power up. And then I'll just keep a coiled up lead in here and I'll run it out to either do me airbags or pump up my tires as needed, but it cranks. So if you've got big tires and you're airing up and down often, you really want a twin compressor that's quick um, and it saves you heaps of time and then you'll do it more often. So back in here on this side, I'll grab this again. Everything is neat and fused. You'll see that Caleb templates all these. He cuts out all the holes, he color matches the board, and then he heat shrinks and wires everything hidden behind there. All the wiring is tucked away neatly. So we've got our switches here. We've got our um, in 12 volt sockets here, USBs here. We've got a spare and if we want to run another fridge or another appliance like that. And then we've got a charger breaker and a fuse block breaker. Up here, everything is fused left to right. So this is left side of the canopy right side of the canopy. So if anything ever doesn't work, you can come and pinpoint which fuse it is. Never have I ever had a fuse blow in either the Mazda or the Cruiser. That's how good a job he does. Uh, anyway, this here is for the Symarine monitoring system. Just a bit of smart stuff. DC to DC charger is this one. It's a 40 plus. So this takes alternator current and turns it into 40 amps going into your battery. And it also takes the solar panel on the roof and it's an MPPT solar charger. And so that charges from the panel into our battery as well. This one in here is a 40 amp AC charger, which means if we're pulled up on a powered site um, and we're really flat or I don't know, we need to charge it up, then you plug in an AC lead and you'll charge that up via 240 volt power. And that keeps everything running schmicko. There you go. I think that about, that about covers it, eh? Like the battery sits under a little shelf under a panel in here, just below the compressor there. I'll show you that, um, but I'm stoked with it. Mate, for full-time travel, we just, we feel so lucky to have a setup like this and it just works, you know? Everything we've talked about, everything we planned with Caleb, it just works a treat and it could not have worked out better. So anyway, come up the front, there we go. I think, oh, hang on, no, we didn't come back here. I'll quickly show you this. Have I shown you this before? I probably have, but I get pretty excited about it. This is where the Mercury 20 sits on our old Max slide. I absolutely love it, mate. Anyway, um, that's about it. One more thing I'll show you is just at the back end for towing. So I've got the stone stomper at the moment, so it's hard to see, but can you swing in there, Beck? All we've got is an Anderson plug and a seven pin flat. So there you go. The Anderson plug provides charge to the van and the seven pin flat is just your lights and your electric brakes. So there you go. That's at the rear end. Now you can put a rear winch in these things too. There's a rear cradle there on the J-Max chassis. Something we'll never use though. So, all right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. That is part five of the build series, all about the 12 volt upgrades to the cruiser and what's in the canopy with the power system. So as always, give us your comments and your feedback. Um, if you'd like to know any more info, I'll have quick links in the video description so you can hit them and you can go to places like Enerdrive, Pro Touring, Norweld. You can find out more info for yourself if I can't answer your questions. Anyway, that was part five of the build series, 12 volt power. Cheers. Righto, competition time. Here's how to enter. But firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to the guys who supplied the gear, Enerdrive and My Generator. Thanks to those guys um, for supplying these great prizes for us to give away to you, all right? Now, how to enter. All you have to do is two things. Number one, you've got to subscribe to our channel, Trip in a Van on YouTube, right? And number two, uh, there will be a hyperlink in the video description and that will take you to the entry page. All you gotta do is put in your details. The comp will run for a week, so I'll draw it next Sunday, just a random prize draw of the entries and we will get in touch with you, find out your details and my generator will post out the gear for you guys, right? So a um, little bit more info about uh, my generator. We're partnered with those guys to provide you with some great discounts. So I'll drop in our codes below and you can check those out on the entry page as well. It'll tell you the discounts you get if you need any Enerdrive gear or anything on the Mod Generator page. Um, you can go there and use our code and get yourself a bargain. So good luck guys. Um, I'm gonna do a bit of a sneaky one too. I've got a hat and a stubby cooler. Just drop a comment below and I'll pick a comment randomly and uh, I'll get in touch with you and I'll send you out a hat and a stubby cooler. All right guys, hope you enjoyed part five of the build series. Any questions, comments, feedback, let me know, and uh, good luck with the comp. I'll send out some gear soon. Cheers.